Today we are going to be talking about backstabbers and world-class backstabbers at that. I mean, some of the best. And we're also going to be connecting some of the international dots that are at play on the world stage today. Some of the pieces of the puzzle that I'd like to talk about are CERN, you've heard of CERN, Turkey Erdogan, the CIA, Mossad, attempted coup on Turkey, and a journalist. Surprisingly enough, how a little tiny lady journalist connects to this whole puzzle. Well, she did work for CERN at one time. That's probably how it all comes together. So why don't we start with Erdogan from Turkey, because he learned a valuable lesson when he got into that bed. He got involved with that nasty, filthy menage a trois with the American Zionist Empire. And it didn't really work out exactly the way he had planned. But as funny as this photoshopped picture looks, there's some irony in this photo, because it may be Erdogan who has the last smile on his face when it's all said and done in the end. But what about those claims out there that Erdogan was working with Netanyahu the whole time? I say not so fast. Let's look at it a little closer. Now I do believe that Erdogan was, and I emphasize he was at one point, working with Netanyahu. But this was way prior to the coup attempt. And here's the reason that I believe that Erdogan made that fatal decision to start cooperating with Netanyahu, Israel, and the Mossad. I believe that he temporarily got into bed with Israel because he had dreams of the rebirth of the Ottoman Empire. And he needed someone to sell the oil that his son was stealing down there in Syria. And of course, if you're going to steal oil, you need somebody to fence it off. Erdogan knew exactly who to go to to fence off the stolen oil. Now this criminal operation was running like a fine Swiss timepiece until around December 2015. And that's when some high-ranking Turkish military officials decided that they were going to take orders from NATO, they were going to cooperate with the CIA slash Mossad, and they were going to shoot down a Russian jet. Yeah, that's when everything started to fall apart. It was at this point in the game where Erdogan knew he was being stabbed in the back. He was getting slapped in the face with a bitter dose of reality. And what really drove it home was when the Russian bear Putin bombed his stolen oil caravan. And it was here that Erdogan knew that his dreams of the rebirth of his Ottoman Empire was going up in smoke. And it was, it was here at this point where Erdogan should have known that something was coming down the road, you know, seven months later. But now, we have to go back in time to really figure out what set these dominoes in motion. We really do have to go back six months earlier, before the Russian military men shot the Russian jet down, before that covert act was put into place. We need to go back six months, and this is where it really gets good. You see, there's a group of people out there that we're not allowed to talk about, and apparently that goes for Erdogan also, because it was June of 2015 where Erdogan goes out and makes some bold statements. He makes the bold claim that the New York Times is the Jewish capital of the world. What he was trying to say there, that New York was at the heart, the capital of this New World Order Zionist plan to take over the world, and they were always coming down upon Erdogan. They were always against the Ottoman Empire, and Erdogan was getting sick and tired of it. So he came out publicly and condemned the New York Times. He condemned the New York, the Jewish capital of the world. He came out there. I mean, you didn't really hear much about this, of course, because mainstream media doesn't like to talk about those type of things. So here you got the leader of Turkey 
making a bold claim like this. Hardly anybody in America heard about it, because like I said, if CNN or Fox doesn't tell you about it, well, it ain't news, is it? Well, Americans are waking up that there's a lot of news out there that we're not being told about. And this is what I really want to say. Do you really think it's a coincidence that on June of 2015, Erdogan comes out publicly, and that's the key there, because, you see, men in his position are not allowed to come out publicly telling the truth like this. But do you really believe it's a coincidence that on June of 2015, Erdogan makes these bold statements about the New York Times, the Jewish capital, and all of a sudden, one year later, there's a CIA Mossad coup to take him out and overtake his country? Do you really think this is a coincidence? Because I think not. So now that we've established that Erdogan should have seen the backstabbers coming, why don't we stop for a commercial break to ponder the future? Hmm. Really? That looks familiar. Okay, so we're back. Why don't we do an overview of what we know up until this point? First, Erdogan comes out June of 2015 with some bold statements. And then, six months later, December 2015, a rogue military official orders the shootdown of a Russian jet. And then, approximately seven months later, there's an attempted coup on Erdogan's country and his life. Now, we are led to believe that this is all a coincidence. Well, I think not. But maybe at this point in the story, you're thinking to yourself, that Erdogan must be the luckiest man alive. And I don't think there's anybody out there who's going to argue with that fact. Because this is where Erdogan says, guess what? Guess what, Obama? I'm still standing. And you're gone. Well, things started to get serious. Obama was feeling the heat. Erdogan was extremely pissed off, but lucky to be alive. And he told Obama where to get off. And then he went rushing into the arms of the Russian bear Putin for protection. And this is what we're talking about today. Basically, a change in the balance of power across the whole globe. And what's the first thing that Erdogan did after he survived the coup attempt? He started to plurge personnel throughout the country, government and military. Anybody who had any involvement with the CIA was plurged. He was brutal, brutal. Now people call him a dictator, but he's alive. And he's basically anybody at all connected to the CIA, you're gone. So where does this lead us to? It leads us to Robert College. It's a funny thing about Robert's College. It's an American college in Turkey, and it's the oldest American university still standing outside of the U.S. It's got a long tradition. And there it is in Turkey. And this is where we come to the interesting part of the story, because now we're going to connect the last of the dots. And that brings us to an author and a journalist. Her name is Ashler Erdogan. Now, I don't believe she's any relation to the leader, Erdogan, or she probably would not have been arrested for terrorism, because she was arrested for terrorism not long after the coup attempt, and she was thrown in prison, and she has just been released on the first day of her trial. Now she's going, she's on trial now, in Turkey. She's on trial for terrorism. Now remember, she's an author and a journalist. She writes books. But you see, she also was trained at this American college in Turkey. Now if you were the CIA, this is where you'd put your new recruits. This would be the training ground that you could even recruit from this college. This is very important because remember, Erdogan is plurging anybody that has anything to do with the CIA. Now, we do realize, everybody knows that all of mainstream media, newspapers, magazines, it's all been infiltrated. It's all contaminated with this new world order, this Zionist plan to take over the world. So you do not get 
to be a journalist. You do not get pushed up there to write books unless they own you. Erdogan knows this. So I'm trying to connect the dots here. The last dot is why would Erdogan put this journalist and author in prison? I think it has to do with CERN. Now, like I said, she was just released from prison. There's going to be a trial. I believe the trial is just for show. I don't think it really means anything. What I think happened was there, was a, there were interrogations. I believe this woman was interrogated thoroughly when she was locked up. And I believe that what Erdogan and the Turkish officials are looking for, they're looking for information on CERN. Because everybody knows that CERN is part of this global military-industrial complex. I mean, there's some really scary stuff they're playing with. Who knows? They might collide some atoms and blow up the whole world for all we know. It's some evil shit going on over there. And it's all top secret. It's all global military industrial complex. It has CIA written all over it. Erdogan knows this. Now, just by coincidence, yeah, and everybody knows that I don't believe in coincidences, this lady, her name is what, Ashler Erdogan, after getting out of an American college in Turkey, and having some other intelligence training, off she goes to work at the CERN project before she's recruited into journalism. And we know that journalism is completely contaminated with CIA. This has intelligence community written all over it. Erdogan's not that stupid. I mean, these people just tried to take him out. There was a coup on his country. They tried to take him out, literally end his life, put him six foot under. And I'm telling you, he's getting rid of anybody and everybody who has any CIA connections. Yeah, this story is weird. And think about this also. Erdogan, now the dictator Erdogan, has literally put thousands of people, tens of thousands of people in prison or killed since the coup. Now, have you heard about any of these people who are in prison? Have you heard about them? No. But you've heard about her, haven't you? Out of all the people that the mainstream media, that the press could focus on, tens of thousands of people, they pick her to focus on. That tells you right there she's in it. She's in the, she's in the military industrial complex. She worked for CERN. My opinion of the subject is she was arrested and interrogated for any information she may have on CERN, her CIA contacts, and who knows, she'll probably, the show is, the, the trial is probably for show. She'll probably be let off. I think they were looking for information. That's my opinion. And as I have said a thousand times before, I do not believe in coincidences. Everything happens for a reason. And I believe that Erdogan's life was spared for one reason and one reason only. Because he's going to play a role. He has to play his part. On the world stage, he's going to help bring down the American Zionist Empire as we know it today.